Iron Crown is one of the scariest new Pokemon added to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC, with a Psychic and Steel typing, base 98 speed, amazing special attack, and the ability to speed boost with Cork Drive, it's a threatening endgame sweeper or even an opener with access to Expanding Force. But just how powerful will it be in VGC? Let's go over some movesets and showcase it for you today. If you enjoy this gameplay in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon videos. But before we get into it, this channel is partnered with Gamersubs. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersubs through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersubs is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. So, as of a few days ago, we have confirmation now that Iron Crown, Iron Leaves, Iron Boulder, uh, Walking Wake, Gouging Fire, and Raging Bolt are all going to be VGC legal as of January 1st, which means my Portland team is good to go. But, on top of that, it means we have moveset guides coming out for all these guys. I already did one anticipating this to be true, but now that we know it, I can move forward with even more. We'll be covering Walking Wake last, but yeah, so... Iron Crown is the Cobalion Paradox form that is a Psychic and Steel type. Of the three, I would say that it is the best of the future Paradox ones. Um, and that's just because it is an expanding force spamming machine. So yeah, we're going to get into how to use it. I probably already said this in the intro, but if you guys enjoy this gameplay in time, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. It means a ton to me and my goal is to get 200,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. So let's go ahead and get into this. So, Iron Crown. Its stats are pretty good. 90 HP, 72 attack, 100 defense, 122 special attack, 108 special defense, and 98 speed. This thing is actually really bulky. 90, 100, 108 is nothing to scoff at, especially with the steel psychic typing. That's pretty good defensively. Steel covers for, um, I don't know, steel adds enough resistances where you don't mind being a psychic type because psychic is typically a very frail type uh, matchup wise. You know, you're weak to ghost, dark, bug, uh, you know, just offensive types that are. Not very fun to be weak against, considering we have Fluttermane running around and King Gambit running around. But yeah, we'll be making full use of its ability in Quark Drive for all of these sets. Uh, it is a very terrifying Pokemon at 98 speed with 122 special attack. Uh, the 98 puts it one point above Urshifu, which is really big. If this thing was slower than Urshifu, it would not be good. If it was even speed tied, it'd be questionable. But... Yeah, uh, that 98 speed means it's going to be slower than your Chi Yu's and stuff, so Chi Yu is a very positive matchup into it, but also still be slower than opposing Fluttermane, unless you're going with a booster speed set, in which case Fluttermane will have to be booster speed or Tailwinded or have like Icy Wind support or something to make sure it's going to outspeed this guy. Uh, so this guy's pretty terrifying. Let's go ahead and get into the first move set. Like I said, it's an expanding force machine, but it does have a signature move as well. Tachyon Cutter is a steel type move that hits twice in a row, 50 base power each, meaning it's 100 base power. It's got 20 points over Flash Cannon and Breaks Through Focus Sashes. Uh, and yeah, not being able to miss is pretty awesome, and that 100 means it's pretty strong. Coming off of that base 122, uh, you'll be able to one-shot a lot of very powerful Pokemon, but the main thing you're going to be running this guy for is, of course, Expanding Force. So Expanding Force is an 80 base power Psychic type move that if you're on terrain, or if the user is on Psychic terrain, it has a 50% increase, meaning that it is 120, and then after the second stab boost, it is, what, 120 times 1.5? 1 uh, 180. So 180 base power coming off of Iron Crown, and hits both opponents. Very, very powerful. So, uh, that means that this guy's gonna want to be paired next to Indeedy Female basically all the time, uh, and this first moveset is gonna ensure that uh, you get the most bang for your buck out of it. This guy is more of an endgame Pokemon in my opinion. You can open up with it as well if you think it's positive into your opponent's team. Like if they're gonna lead off with like uh, a no speed control Urshifu lead or something and they don't have a lot of dark types. Leading off with Iron Crown and spamming uh, Expanding Force and, and Follow Me is gonna be very powerful. Uh, with 252 speed, 172 special attack. You're going to end up with a speed set of 165 and a special attack set of 164. So this is a speed boosting booster energy set. Uh, you put 76 in that HP, it gets you to 175. You like that odd number. It helps out with uh, certain things like ruination and stuff. Uh, and that will allow you to put four and four into both your defenses. And that is the first move set. So basically, we're maxing out that special attack to the point where we're able to still speed boost past it. Uh, and make sure we're not getting a special attack boost because that is going to be very important for the Fluttermane matchup and for the Scarf Urshifu matchup. You're going to always be faster than every Scarf Urshifu. That is very important to this guy's success, in my opinion. So yeah, 
This moveset is just about clicking, expanding, force, and tachyon cutter. And we are Terra Grass, Terra Blast. Uh, and that's mainly just because when you have a booster energy, there isn't really a huge demand for a move like Volt Switch, which is, in my opinion, one of its better options. Uh, it doesn't get Thunderbolt or anything. Um, but the other option that you have is like Air Slash or Focus Blast. I went with Terra Blast here in Terra Grass just because uh, you're able to turn into a Grass type, resist ground type moves, which you're naturally weak to as a Steel type. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you'll be able to function if you need to go for Trick Room, even though you're like a fast Pokemon. Uh, if you're facing off versus like a Moongus or something, being able to instantly turn into a Terra Grass Pokemon and avoid a Spore could be integral to uh, not losing as soon as the Trick Room goes up. So yeah, defensively, it's pretty good. Also into like Urshifu, uh, Rapid Strike, you'll be able to resist the Surging Strikes in Rain, allowing you to live since you have that pretty awesome bulk on this guy. So yeah, that's the first move set. Next one I have here is Choice Specs. This one's very basic. We're Timid, Max, Max, 4 HP, and we're running uh, Choice Specs, Volt Switch, Expanding Force, Tachyon Cutter, and Focus Blast with Terra Psychic. We are going all in on the damage on this one. This is, again, sort of an endgame Pokemon, but you could lead with it as well. Uh, you're not getting that speed boost, so you will outspeed all in like a non-Scarf Urshifu, uh, but you have to be careful with a lot more Pokemon. Of course, Flutterman's going to outspeed you, and Choice Specs has the potential to one-shot you, so it's a very scary matchup for that. Uh, by running Volt Switch, you'll be able to pivot in. At, you'll be able to pivot in and out of the field uh, pretty effectively uh, and deal major damage to, like I said, you know, opposing Urshifu, which that uh, Volt Switch will threaten a KO on a lot of these guys, uh, and also be able to deal decent damage to Tornadus if you end up in that position. And the beyond that, it's just expanding force, tachyon cutter, expanding force, tachyon cutter. Get as much damage as you can. And the final move, of course, is focus blast because, I don't know, steel types kind of wall this guy out. Having the option to hit steel types is pretty important. Um, I didn't want to waste the Terra on this guy to get like Terra, I don't know, fighting and Terra blast. I felt like you might as well just go for focus blast here. Uh, it's kind of high commitment because you're locked into a really inaccurate move. But we have seen Focus Blast go really deep into tournaments before, like on, um, oh, I forget who was running it. I think it was Giovanni Costa uh, at the um, most recent regional, uh, San Antonio Regionals is running Focus Blast Choice Specs on his Golden Go. Uh, and you don't want to click it, but if you need to, it's a good option into, you know, King Gambit. So we appreciate that. We appreciate that quite a bit. The final moveset I have is... The exact same EV spread from the first one, uh, however, this one's going to be taking advantage of the pressure that Iron Crown puts off with Expanding Force and a Speed Boost, and using that to get a free Substitute off. So, if you get a Substitute off with this guy, from that point on, you can click Calm Mind, Expanding Force, and Tachyon Cutter. And because this guy's so naturally bulky, you could technically decrease um, the Special Attack Set and just get a little bit more out of the Physical Defense. But yeah, if this guy manages to get that sub off, it's going to be really, really scary for the opponent. Plus one uh, with Psychic Train Up, that Expanding Force is going to one-shot basically anything that isn't immune to it. And Tachyon Cutter is going to be doing a ton of damage as well. Basically, you get a Choice Specs, but you also get bulky enough where you're not going to get one-shot by a Flutter Main. And yeah, I think that this thing's best partners are, of course, in DD. Uh, but unfortunately, because its best partner is in DD, you're going to want to stay away from something that would otherwise be nice for it, like a Rillaboom, to give it some recovery and stuff. Uh, for that reason, I think that like Amoongus is a good partner for it. Uh, and also other just follow me Pokemon. I, I'm personally going to be running it on a Trick Room team uh, with the Speed Booster set just because, like I said, I like the end game aspect of it. You can go for Trick Room and then as soon as the Trick Room ends, you can go for that Speed Booster set and then clean up in the end game versus like the faster Pokemon your opponent might have. So for that reason, I think that Ogre Pond Rock is actually pretty good as a partner for it. i will be able to take on the fire types that it fears. It's also faster than Chi Yu, so you can just go for an IV Culture right away. And that's like very, very nice for this guy. Uh, beyond that, I don't have much to say about Iron Crown other than uh, let's go ahead and try to get into a showcase for it right now. A very quick one. And then tomorrow uh, or the day after I'll be uploading the full showcase. But for now, we'll just be showing off the first moveset. See ya. Okay, let's get into the showcase. So I did manage to finish the team in time. So we're good to go. Unfortunately, it is currently December 26th, a.k.a. Boxing Day in some countries. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> we are not yet able to use this on Ranked Ladder, so we are going to be showcasing on Casual. Um, like I said, I'll be using um, this team in a full video tomorrow or maybe the day after. But this is a fun little hyper offense trick room team I built with an endgame option for um, the Paradox Cobali and Iron Crown. And we'll see if I can get to use it. I I'm going to try my best to get a game where I can use it. Hopefully... 
uh, we'll find a team that's close enough to being legal where we can showcase it. Yeah, this is just like a straight up team. Um, and ooh, <laughs> they do not like their Cobalion matchup or their uh, Iron Crown, I guess, or Battle Pass is one I name mine. But ooh, I really like this. The only thing is I have to be kind of careful. I think I'm going to go for the end game against it because I could set up Trick Room here. I could try to set up Trick Room. This is actually a little bit of a rough matchup. Maybe, now we'll open up with it. We'll open up with it. And I think what I'll do is, hmm, actually, no, we're going to end game. Because I don't know how we beat the Incineroar if we don't just end game with it. So we're going to withdraw. Uh, I'm going to lead off with these guys. Uh, we'll bring you and you. And we're going to try to sweep with, um, with this guy, and then as soon as the trick room's over, we can just end game with the uh, Obelion. I'm gonna call it Cobalion for a while. I'm I'm still not used to the <laughs> to the paradox names for uh, the legend mons. All right. Oh, I could have just let off with it. Little lame, little lame, but uh, I don't mind this at all, really. We're going to be able to follow me, Trick Room. All right. Yeah, we'll just go for it. Um, unless they're stalwart, which I don't believe they are. Like, these guys don't tend to run stalwart. They tend to run, um, what was it called? They tend to run stamina, just because you can end game with body press and stuff. So I'd like to get doubled into here if possible. Even a muddy water is fine. So they tailwind. Fine by me. Fine by me. That means that my ogre pond gets to click a move, which is pretty awesome. I think here we'll just go for D gleam and a um, ivy cudgel. And we'll ignore him for a second. This is just to catch a possible Focus Sesh. Or who knows, maybe it's just like a super bulky Pelipper and it'll just live. I'm hoping it's not bulky Pelipper though, because I need it to outspeed me now. The Ogre Pond is max speed, max attack jolly. Um, just because it's, it's better that way, honestly. <laughs> like, you want it to be frail because you need it to go down. Little stamina boost, don't mind too much. As long as I get this Ivy Cudgel off, we'll get rid of you. And my hope was I could get rid of the Incineroar early on, but with that lead, I'm uncertain if they even brought the Incineroar. And this is interesting. They're really not prioritizing the Sogre Pond. Maybe because they don't really see it as a threat, but... They have Tailwind up, so, like, it is a Trick Room Mon now. It wasn't a Trick Room Mon before, but they're making it one. There's the Earthshire Rapid Strike. Alright, obviously I can't get Aqua Jetted. Uh, we'll go for the Horn Leech here, and I am going to go hard into you. Do I want to go hard into you? Actually, I can probably just Dazzling Gleam again. It doesn't really matter, because I want to get the, um... Yeah, because I want to get the... Freaking dude in early. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, it's a showcase. We're, we're still on casual ladder. My opponents won't make the best plays. But the idea here is to get the end game with the Cobalion once this is over. They're not making it easy, though. Or I guess they are making it a little bit easy. Like, I was hoping to lose this Ogre Pond turn one, and it is turn three, and it's taken two KOs. <laughs> Can you KO the Ogre Pond, please? He's just sitting there. Don't let this Ogre Pond take more KOs. Stop letting me take KOs with the Ogre Pond. Okay. Depending on what they have in the back, we might be able to still do the Expanding Force thing. Uh, but it is optimal to get in the Ursin of Blood Moon here. Because that isn't a Moongus. With Tailwind up, though... <laughs> 
I don't know what they're expecting. Uh, I'm going to follow me. And... Two turns left to Psychic Train, two turns left to Trick Room. I can Terra Grass Endgame beat this Amoongus every single time. Um... Because Amoongus should go first this turn. Yeah, I'm going to follow me in Hyper Voice here. Because they Rage Powder. Interesting. Probably just blocking the Earth Power. Hyper Voice goes off. I think a little bit of a stamina boost. It's fine. I'm, I'm down to only special attackers. Flash cannon. And now, even though it seems like I should be in a winning position where it's like, oh yes, I always beat this guy. Um, that's not entirely true because now I have to be really careful. <laughs> now I have to be like absurdly careful for this end game. Actually, no, I can just win right now, can't I? <sighs> He's probably slower than me, but the point is... I can Terra Grass here, Expanding Force, and get rid of you. And we'll just Earth Power. Yeah, because I think they need to Spore here. And I have a pretty good Special Defense stat, so I should be fine. If they, like, if, if for some reason they, um... If for some reason they uh, they don't Spore into the, uh... Cobalion, I'd be really surprised. I guess they could still Rage Powder, but it doesn't matter too much. They do Rage Powder here. I'm going to get the Earth Power off. Should KO at plus one. And now we have a single target Expanding Force. I don't know. If they target into my guy with a Draco, I could lose. Nope, they Body Press. So that should be a win. Just because this Expanding is going to do way too much this turn. And then I can follow up with the Tachyon Cutter. Yeah, Tachyon Cutter next turn will do it. I am speed boosted, so that is the end game I was looking for. A really weird way of getting to the end game I was looking for, but regardless, we take it. Do you guys know why they call it Tachyon Cutter? Because it attacky on you twice. It's Blood Moon, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, because if they defensively Terra, <laughs> just Blood Moon, you know? They Terra Fair. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Because <laughs> now I can show Tachyon Cutter. Pow. <laughs> Look, this is a really weird way to showcase the Mon. Typically, what's supposed to happen is you lose a bunch of Mons and then you use it as a fallback. And then just win in the endgame with Expanding Force anyways. But, I don't know. Weird matchup. Casual Ladder gets kind of crazy. So yeah, that is the showcase uh, for this guy. We'll be doing a full showcase tomorrow with this team. Uh, maybe the day after, I don't know. We'll see how quickly Balin gets on the editing. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. If you want the rental code, watch the next video. Don't, want, don't ask for the rental code in this one. Or actually, ask for it anyways. Comment down below, where's the rental code? Huh? Question mark. And it'll help me in the algorithm. All right, see you guys. Bye.